is our plumber, Rich Lather, right behind me. Um, he's going to be giving the bulk of the information tonight. He's the expert in this area. And uh, But I just wanted to welcome you to the course. Uh, we didn't know it was going to be the most beautiful night of the entire year when we planned this virtually, but here we are. So we will stay to the point. Uh, we've got some really great info, though, in this class. It's really useful for homeowners, for people doing simple things like changing a faucet, uh, all the way to changing a toilet and some tricky things that you can sometimes discover when you get into some of those projects. Uh, briefly about Project Home, we're a, a nonprofit, a local nonprofit here in Madison. We've been doing work around Dane and Green County, um, fixing up people's homes, student repair and maintenance, and also home improvement projects for nearly 50 years. And uh, we do operate a number of income eligible programs related to those fields, including energy efficiency work, um, but we also do have a contractor division and we can be hired by anyone in the community to do projects at their homes as well. Uh, we do free estimates through that too. So if you're looking for contractors, we are an option. We do have that service um, in addition. So uh, great information on our website about all the things we do and activities we have. It is projecthomewi.org. Uh, the other thing, if you like these classes, we have a handful of them on our YouTube channel um, with different topics as well. Uh, and that if you go to YouTube and look uh, Project Home WI, you can find our page really quickly. Or if you're on our website, projecthomewi.org, you click the YouTube icon, it'll bring you right to our YouTube channel. So um, that's all I have to say. This is Rich. And Rich and I were just talking about this before. We are both coming up on our 12th anniversary here at Project Home. So uh, in one month, it'll be our 12th anniversary here. So we've been here a while. I've been working for the agency, really happy to do so. And Rich is our main guy in the plumbing department. So I'll toss it over to him in just a second. Um, but thanks again for coming tonight. We appreciate it. Rich, let me just change this up for you. And go. All right, uh, my name is uh, Rich Lather. Like Jason said, I've been here uh, 12 years and enjoying it, learning a lot, learn every day new things and uh, We'll get started here. Uh, I've been a plumber since 1999. I started my journeyman or apprentice, sorry. And then uh, five years of schooling, I got my journeyman's license and got hired at Project Home in uh, 2008. So really enjoy it. So in f we have this booklet here and we turn to the first page. We have water meters. Yeah, our sponsors tonight is by MG&E. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> There's some pictures of me. Uh, the 500 is that I put in over 500 water heaters already. And uh, there's some pictures of me teaching some other classes my crazy glasses. And then of course there's the pack, Packer great, Jerry Kramer, go pack. <laughs> Jason likes that picture. All right, water meters. Does everybody know where their water meter is in their basement if you have city water? Um, the purpose of the valves on each side of the meter is that the city can come in and shut off both meters and break the union on the meter itself, collect, collect the water that drips out into a pail and then they can change their meter. So uh, it's really nice to have the two valves. Those are butterfly valves. I do have here on my table some um, quarter turn valves, so just a quarter turn and it's off. I've already replaced several butter five valves because uh, the owners like something that's quicker and not leaking. You know, they do get old, they do drip and uh, the homeowners do not like wet basements. So these come in different sizes, um, depends on what's the size of service that comes through the concrete. Um, mostly it's copper, it could be PEX. Um, and so on. Okay, anything else on water? 
the water lines. All right, we could go to the next page. Different types of shutoff valves. Okay, there's the there's a threaded ball valve, which I don't have. I don't put a lot of those in. Um, you can see that you thread the copper into it. Um, the, gated, the gated valves are the ones are the oldest out there, but I've been putting in all ball valves just a quarter turn. They're quicker and more efficient. And you can see the diagram, how they work, how the gate valve keeps you keep turning and turning and turning to open it and then you close it the same way with the new ball valve you can just do it a quarter turn and it's done very quickly uh anybody have any questions about the, the shutoff valves okay next page is common faucets and toilet shutoffs so I have some of those here. Um, I have here a threaded, this looks like a uh, half inch, a threaded valve, which is in older homes. And right there. Okay, and then, JC, uh, you could cut this open. Jesus. <laughs> Jason's helping me here. Yeah, just cut that open for me and then I'll show the, the different sizes. This would be 3 8 versus half inch. If you can see the threads on older homes, um, I do see a more 3 8 the smaller one in the older homes, which I got to take them apart and put new valves on. I don't see a lot of these, but there are some out there. Um, if you have copper, copper sticking out of the, the wall, you can put a compression valve on where you just, there's a, a little ferrule in here that don't you don't lose. So you put the nut on the pipe first, then the ferrule over the, that. And then you can use some pipe dope, which is right here. And, uh, I won't put it on, but I'll kind of give you an idea what you got to do here. So put a little pipe dope on there on the threads. And then put that together like so. And bring her together and get your wrenches. Um, they're over here, but tighten her down real nice and tight. And then you got yourself a new valve for a toilet, for a lav. Um, basically those two, the showers, you, those are kind of hidden in the wall. So question? I didn't tighten it too tight, but. We have, we have one question. Okay. Tell, what do you do when one of those toilet valves freezes up? What's the best way to free it? What's the best way to free that if a toilet valve freezes up? To free, to free this up if it's frozen is to shut the main off and then undo it and just get rid of it. Start over, get a new valve in there. If it's not gonna turn, this one it turns a quarter turn, just like that. There's the older style where they turn, turn, turn. Mm -hmm. But I put, I put a lot of quarter turns in. There's a quarter turn, just kind of loosen it up here, so. You can cut the pipe. You can cut the pipe with the cutter. If it's copper, you can get cut it. If you have enough sticking out, you can cut it. You know, just take your cutter and cut it off. But hopefully, you got enough left to put a new valve on. Does that base answer your question? Okay. Um, different types of um, supply lines. Okay, so the picture with the valve show, this is a toilet and this is a, a flex a supply line. The difference is both 
where the where this end goes on the valve, they're the same for eat the toilet and the lav. Now look at the other end. One is bigger than the other. The bigger one goes for the toilet and the smaller one is for the lav. And they even say it with the sticker you buy when it come you, when you pull it off the shelf. They'll say supply line and the other one will say toilet on it. So make sure you get the right one when you purchase a, a supply line to go up to the faucet. Okay. And these come in different sizes. These can go 12 inch, 16 inch or, or, or 20 inch, depending on how uh, distance the toilet is or how far it is to the lav or the kitchen, okay? Um, the picture shows that there's a sketching. You can put the sketching on the pipe. It's that thing that goes right up against the wall and uh, that co that'll cover the hole up. Don't forget your sketch and that goes on first before you put the valve on. All right, uh, types of pipes. We have cast iron. It's usually black. I do have part of a drum trap here. If I can show that to you. So this part right here, this elbow is cast iron and this is galvanized. And I will get to the drum trap later, but just know that there's some, when you get galvanized that there's a sediment inside where PVC does hardly get any sediment in it because it's the of, of the material. And uh, copper I got right here. That's another another type of pipe that is commonly used a lot. Um, PVC rigid is mostly for drain lines. Again, um, do you should not use PVC for water lines. It's uh, unless it's under non-pressure. Uh, well, CPVC is the kind of a, a yellowish type pipe where water lines are used most common in, in these. Uh, water softeners, I see a lot of these done in water softeners, uh, top of, tops of water heaters, uh, these, these pipes are used and out through the whole house. Um, there's PEX, I got, there's all different colors of PEX, blue, red, uh, and white. It depends on if you wanna use the PEX red, that's for hot and the blue is could be, the blue or the white could be used for cold Depends on, and then all the fittings that you got to buy with it. And then there's a crimper that you got to crimp them, the fittings on so that it doesn't leak. It's a, a lot of stuff for you to have to make the plumbing work. Um, ABS, you, those are mostly in trailer homes, black pipe, um, black pipe or rust that should only be used for gas, correct. Uh, I don't have a piece of black pipe with me. Oh yeah, I do right here. This is black pipe. And this is usually for gas piping. And I have three trays, half inch, three quarter and one inch. I keep you know, a little bit of everything when I'm doing water heaters, gas piping. Um, so, that any other questions? No. All righty, moving on to shark bites. So shark bites can come in different sizes, different uh, PVC or brass. I have. Here is a one inch brass shark bite. Okay, it's a quarter turn. So I don't have, I could open up the three. 
Let's open this right here. So here's a, a one by three quarter shark bite. And you could use this PEX right here. And it, this will go right in side here. There's a, like a two step system. The first one grabs it. And then you got to really push hard. You can hear it go in the second time. All right, so now you have a shark bite and you're done. Pretty basic. What if you made a mistake? Well, they make these little critters right here. You snap it on. Push it up against the pipe. You're going to push against that black thing, which is this thing, and, and pull on the pipe. And comes right off. Pretty cool. I'll show you again. So there are the two, two steps. Get it in there first, and then push hard. And you'll hear it go in. And you, like I said, if you want to take it off, just push that up against the black thing, and it comes right off. So pretty neat tool you got there. You can do that for a half inch. Heard that first click, second click. Get the right little guy that takes it apart and boom. Rich, why do people like to use shark bites so much? Shark bites are quick and they are a little expensive, but it's a quick way to get your plumbing fix done quicker. No salt, you have no glue, no, no stinky smell. Uh, <laughs> it's just real quick, but like I said, you, you'll pay a little more, but, but if you want it done quick and no worries, shark bites the way to go. Uh, the picture shows the fittings on the far right. Like I said, there's different colors, blue, there's red and there's white. You got, you got the ball valves where you put the pecs over the ball valve and then you crimp it down. You got your stop fixtures where they can slam it right in and you're done. So like I said, it's it's a if you screw up, you can actually take it apart with these nice tools, all the one inch, three quarter, and half. So any questions on shark bites? Okay, so on the next page there again, it shows copper, carbon steel. I do not use that. I use PEX a little bit. I use polybutylene. Well, you could say that wrong, couldn't you, Jason? <laughs> so different uh, brass, or I got plastic. Plastic is maybe a little bit cheaper than the brass. So, but, and then uh, make sure that on these shark bites, they come, you gotta make sure I tell everything here. Just don't skip over it, Rich. So you gotta, this part here, well, the flat part goes in first, okay? Cause the pipe will meet that. So you got two of those, put the flat end in first, make sure you push it all the way in. And then you can slip the pipe over in there and then once it's in, you can put the, the uh, what do you call these critters? It's actually, it's a pin, a snap pin, where the pipe will never come apart unless the pin comes off. So you got to actually pull it off. So the snap ring actually holds it in there forever until you take it off. So that's what these little loose things are in the bag. You gotta make sure you snap those in and then put your pin over it once it's all in, okay? If you put it in and you got a leak, you're gonna to have to shut the water off and try to push it in more. Maybe you didn't quite get it in all the way and then re-snap your pin back in there. Okay. Um, 
Our next page it is the how the plumbing works. Okay, so let's start with the gray pipe. Your gray pipe, your pipe is the main under the floor and it also goes out through the roof. <clears throat> so then you've got the, and, and it also goes to the street, correct. So then you got it to red. The red is the actual drain. It goes to the toilet, it goes to the lav, and it goes up to the shower. So you have some minimum sizes here to remember. The minimum size for a toilet is three inch. Okay. Uh, the minimum size for the lav, if you're doing a bathroom group, is two inch up to the T. And the minimum size for a shower is two inch all the way up to the drain. Just some common sizes to remember. Um, each fixture has a trap. So in the toilet, the trap is in the porcelain, okay? The, and then you put a trap on the lav underneath the, 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 the sink where the drawers or the open the doors are. And then your trap for the shower would be um, below the base of the shower. Okay, and the green pipes, you notice the green pipes, there's a T in the line that vents the the red pipe. So what, what happens when you flush the toilet and there's water rushing down the pipe, it needs air to bring with it. That goes for all traps. So you need a vent so that it brings the air with it when you run the lab or when you're showering and the water runs down the drain, it's pulling the air with it. Question? Or you need a vent for each trap and that ties into the attic and that ties into that gray pipe, which you need three inch minimum size for every house. And that ties into there, depending on where it goes. Walt has a question. Okay. Go ahead, Walt. Oh, I just did it as a chat. Exactly what is a trap? Oh, exactly what is a trap? A trap prevents sewer gas. Um, okay, right here, I got one. That's the only one I have. So this is an inch and a half trap. Okay. Did the water, well, I'll get to that point here. I just gotta get this. I gotta get this set up so I ex explain it here. You remind me. Yeah, Thank you, Jason. That's right. that's right. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, all right. This part of the trap goes to the bottom of the sink. This part of the trap hooks to the trap. If I can get it here. All right. And this part goes to the wall. Okay, for the purpose of the trap is to have water in the trap so that you don't get sewer gas throughout the house. Okay, so the trap from the bottom here, make a line over to here is full of water. Therefore, no sewer gas can get in from the system. Does that kind of answer your question? Okay. So every fixture needs a trap to prevent sewer gas and it has to have water in it to stop the sewer gas. Thank you. No, okay. So hopefully that makes sense why the, all this green and red and underground plumbing makes the house work. So therefore, if you cannot 
if you're remodeling and you cannot get a green pipe on the trap, you have to make uh, an access somewhere near for a studer vent. Now a studer vent will probably be six to eight inches or maybe 12, depending on where you can get the, the uh, clean out. I mean, I, I'm sorry, an access door. So um, a studer vent, can also be a vent that is like half half of that plumbing, which it will it should be really close to the sink or really um, for the for the shower it can be in a cavity or a wall somewhere so it's accessible to make sure the studer vent is working properly. So ever ever heard of a studer vent? No. Okay. Just let them know that's. A like if you can't, so let's say a lot of times we're doing a new bathroom. If you're if you're remodeling a bathroom and something you can't, reach, you can't, tie, into you can't tie in an existing, you can put a studer vent in, and that can be Googled online. You can Google studer vents and they show you how to do it. I do not have one with me tonight, um, but you wouldn't have to run all that green pipe out through the roof. A studer vent would just make it work by code but you have to have access to the studer vent the studer vent will let the air in but it won't let the air out so just remember every trap has to be vented and if you cannot vent it out through the roof try to get a studer vent in and it has to be accessed so that if it does not work well, you'll know if it doesn't work because it'll it'll let sewer gas out and then you have to replace it by um, putting in a new one in. All righty. Um, no questions on the layout of the house. All right, drum traps should be replaced. And that's what I had here just a few minutes ago. This heavy boat anchor. <laughs> if you got one I have in, a, I have a in your house. Question. Okay. Oh, um. Is the sewer gas like, is it dangerous or deadly or something that you have to have that vent? Is it dangerous or deadly? Yes. Okay. It is. So make sure that all if the pee traps in the it, house. Yes, it, it could possibly harm you. Okay. So make sure the pee traps are all full. Yeah, that. That's the same thing like uh, when we use. Let me get a drink. That's another quick thing about about the traps too. If you have like a sink that you don't use very often or a toilet that you don't use very often, like my, for example, my parents have an old bathroom in their basement that doesn't get used much anymore. And you need to make sure you run water in there every so often, because otherwise that trap can dry up and then you can start to have those sewer gases come up. So if you have any fixtures in your house that don't get used very often, Make sure every month or so you check that, throw a little water in there and make sure that that trap has water in it to prevent the, the sewer gases from coming back. Question? Yes. What, what if you go away as we do sometimes in the winter and you turn off all the water in the house? If you go away in the winter and you turn off all the water, you know, you're not using the water in the house for a few months. Right. Um, would it dry up that fast? It's probably not. Probably not. Okay. Thanks. It's good to like if you're around. It's good to check that often, like maybe monthly, every couple of months. But I would say more like the seasons change. Yeah, I, when the seasons change. At my parents' house, it was literally I think a year or more, and because I, I went down and looked, it smelled terrible in their basement. I was like, "What's happening?" I opened the toilet, and there was no water in the bowl anymore. So that's how long it had been, and they just had to put some water in there to fill the trap. All right, back to Rich. Okay. So drum traps should be replaced if they're leaking. Um, you can see in that one picture on the right, uh, up on top there, it's been leaking um, where that white sediment is. Um, they usually leak down here at the bottom where the, the clean out is. Um, sometimes they leak, the shower leaks, and then you have to replace everything. But notice if you can see this, if I can get it real close, there's the galvanized piping. 
and the galvanized does tend to plug easier because of the material versus PVC where it, it's more quick and plastic. So, but yeah, if you got one of these in your basement um, and if, if they're leaking, replace them, but you know, if, it, if it's not broken, they say don't fix it. All right. Okay. Next page. Um, some illegal traps. I'm not seeing very many of them nowadays because of people are, you know, finding out YouTube or Google the types of, of traps that they're fixing in themselves or they're getting us to fix them or another plumber that it, these are illegal traps and they don't want any trouble down the road. So they're just fixing them bell trap, drum trap, a crown vented trap, S trap. Not seen very many lately, but give you credit people out there or do it themselves, which is good. All right, a complete toilet diagram. Um, so I'm gonna start out by saying, if you fix your toilet or you need a new toilet, I wanna highly express where your floor is and where the closet collar is. I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna get closer to the end of this table. So let's say the table, can you get the, can you see it? Yeah, okay, there you go. So this is say, this is your main floor in your bathroom. You walk on it every day. And if you see your toilet flange like this, you're, you're fine, okay? Now, if you take your toilet up and now it's flush, you have a problem. It's not up to where it's supposed to be. The flange is supposed to be above the floor, just like this, all right? So now that it's flush, I brought some closet collars with me. Uh, this one's a little thinner. You can put that on top of there and screw it down. But if it's really low, I've got a thicker one. Thicker one, I always put caulk in here. You caulk it down and then screw it down to bring it back up to where it should be. Um, try to use the uh, slidable where you put the bolt. I'll get the bolt here. I got one here. So here's the bolt. You get it open for you. So put the bolt in where, and down floor goes. It's okay. That's what Jason's for. You put it in where the slideable is. I do not like to use these because you don't have much room to give. If you use this one, you have a little bit of give. And that's kind of what you need when you're setting a toilet properly. Okay. Make sure your flange is on top of your floor and then you can put in your bolt and go to right to tone. <laughs> um, different thicknesses of wax rings. Let's say you can't get the flange above. This, this wax ring is a little thicker versus the thinner one. tell the difference. See the difference of thickness? So if your collar is below just a little bit, you can go with the thicker wax ring versus the thinner. Okay, and then make sure you peel all this off and set it in there. Do you wanna tell them about a, a program on, or you Google how to change a toilet? Sure, so I did put a chat early on. There's uh, a, a nice video for, it goes over all the steps of changing a toilet. It also gives you a materials list as well. and kind of shows you step-by-step step what to do 
a um, couple of good pointers in there, but it's a pretty comprehensive uh, video. It is nice that you have that checklist too of items that you'll need before you get started. Um, the one other thing I wanted to mention about the toilets since we're talking about it is if you live in Madison, the Madison Water Utility still has a $100 toilet rebate if you change the toilet to a water sense toilet. So that's a 1.28 gallon per flush toilet. And you can send in the information. It's a real simple one page form. And you send that into the toilet, uh, the um, water utility, excuse me. And you get a hundred dollar bill credit for that. Only for one toilet. For one toilet per household. If you're a Madison water utility customer. There are other area utilities that also have toilet rebates. Some are like 50 bucks. So Middleton's I think was $50 the last I checked. So those are out there uh, and you can look at those based on where you live and see if your utility offers a rebate. So if you're going for a new toilet, you might as well get a water sense one, save water and also uh, get the rebate. I have a question. Um, yes. So Question. why uh, my toilets uh, have to be on top of the floor? What's the... Oh, what? uh, Rich, you want to explain why he's wondering why the closet flange oh. has to be above the floor? That's for the bolts to work properly. And the seal, too. And the seal, correct. So let's just say this is the floor. And you got your bolts. Want it, you want it above the floor so the seal works properly. This would go right in there like so. And then you can set your toilet right on top of it. And it kind of, you can move it a little bit left or right. So it, the toilet sets on the floor. Okay. Does that kind of okay. make sense? Okay, yeah. And most of the time when you see that situation, it's when someone's installed new flooring in a bathroom. Correct. And they left, you know, so they, so they left the toilet flange where it was, they put in flooring around it. All of a sudden the floor is higher than it used to be. And you don't have it. Sometimes you have it where the point where it's almost flush and then you can have problems with the seal. Correct. Oh, thank you. Got it. All right. So in the picture, it's uh, there again, if you want to re redo the flex line, make sure you get a toilet one, a supply line. Um, we talked about valves, the compression ring, the copper coming out, the ex excutcheon, which goes first and then the valve, and then the stop valve. Um, underneath the toilet is your closet bolt in your wax ring. Um, you just got to line it up properly and set it, wiggle it on and so that the toilet sits on the floor. And then if you, with your new toilet, you got seat bolts. That's all in the box when it comes with the seat. Um, the tank will have a, a new rubber tank bowl, which it actually should go onto the tank, the threads that come through. And then when you set it on it, it shouldn't come off when you set it on. Mine never, never fall off. Uh, and then you got the two bolts with the rubber washers. And then I use a long, I use a ratchet with a half inch long one. And then I can tighten my bolts quicker instead of using a wrench. Okay. Um, once everything is set, you can, Turn the water on when the flex is hooked, flexible lines hooked up, and then check the water depth in the tank by um, there is that middle piece where the whole the water line goes in there. If water is dripping in there or you know going over that flow line, you can adjust the uh, which is called a fill valve by lowering the lowering the float so that it does not go in the toilet. And like I said, Jason, you can Google that and it'll, it'll tell you how to adjust the flow line in the tank. 
Okay. I just pasted the um, toilet video as well. It's not our video, so it's not on our website, but it is a, a pretty decent video. There's a whole bunch of them out there. This one's pretty good. Um, we did have another question, Rich, in the chat. Okay. I don't know if you can read. Okay. Let me make it further away so you can read it. I'm just kidding. Um, okay, sorry, that was a bifocals joke. It says, <laughs> I have a push button toilet with two buttons. The tank no longer fills with water after the toilet is flushed. How is this fixed or what's the problem? There so, must so be the, a period of, is it, you have to wait a, a period of time for the water to fill back up before you can flush it again. So pressure has to push the button. I'm not sure, they're just wondering. I mean, it, it, you would think if the fill, if the line is connected, yep. that after it's done, it needs flushing. it needs to fill it back up. It should fill back up, and the and then the push button should be pressurized with the water pressure filling it back up. It's going to take maybe a minute or two. If that's not happening, what could be? If it's not happening, then oh, why I won't? I don't deal with a lot of those. Um, I would ask. Uh, what's that? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have much experience. We don't have much experience with them. You could ask a retailer that sells them if they have problems that in that way too. Like a Ferguson or a Rundle Spence or, or the manufacturer. The manufacturer. You can call whatever the name of the toilet is. You can call them and ask why it's not working properly. If they lift up the inside of the I mean, I don't, I don't know the mechanics of those in terms of how the, you know, how it refills, mm -hmm. how it seals and then refills. It could be something with the mechanical. Power. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, just let them know about the current uh, water sense toilets have, have taken, you know, those dual flushes are no, not even in existence anymore. Right. They're so efficient and they do the job for right. both forms of waste that need to Mm hmm Correct. <laughs> yep. Is that is for questions? Yeah. Okay. All right. There's a toilet replacement checklist. Okay. Just some um, things to have on hand. Um, there you go. Adjustable wrench. Uh, tape measure. Channel locking pliers, set of screwdrivers, putty knife, a small bucket or tray to you know, collect some water, sponge, old rags. What I have here when I take the water out of my of the toilets, I also have gloves. I always put my gloves on. Okay. Uh, so notice this handle is already pushed in. So I put the suction cup, this is just pulling water right out of this hole. So when I pull back, it's bringing water with me and then I can either go to the tub or the lav to get rid of it. I didn't get you wet, Darren. So, Don't point that at me. <laughs> Jeez. so it's, they're only 10 bucks. Uh, you can suck out the water and put it over here or the toilet or the lav to get rid of it. So Jason's laughing. Somebody's toilet. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, uh, work gloves, uh, garbage bag. Yeah, do not set an uh, old toilet on the floor. Put it in a garbage bag or cardboard or an old blanket. Just that wax, that wax is just terrible uh, to get up. Um, your new toilet, you got a one piece or a separate tank bowl, your wax ring your new bolts, new toilet seat and lid, um, and your flexible line. All righty, and then we talked about the hose lines, which one to get if you need a toilet one or the supply lines for your kitchen or your lab. All right. And then there's sometimes there can be surprises. Oh boy. 
Yeah, Jason caught me off guard. Thanks, Jason. Um, oh, this, this particular flange, you see this black around the bottom? This actually can go into cast iron. And then taking these Allen wrenches that I have here, I have a whole set of Allen wrenches, get the Allen wrench in there and then you can tighten these down and this thing will expand out into the cast iron. And then once all these are nice and tight, you can actually drill holes through the cast iron and put screws in here and mount it to the cast iron. That's how I PVC replacement for a cast iron toilet. If, if the flange is below the floor, works really well. I've, I've done several of those. And then of course, we've got the, uh, a spacer if the flange is below the floor to bring it back up. This is actually three eighths versus this one's actually half. So or a quarter. You can get different sizes. All righty. Um, your bathroom faucet diagram. There you go, Jason. Um, pretty self-explained here where you got all everything that works. What, what if something like, I've had a, a chrome P-trap where it cracked and started leaking, where I had to go and rip the whole thing out and then where it comes out the wall plastic or, or uh, um, galvanize, I'd have to make adjustments to make PVC. PVC will last forever. Um, those chrome P-traps will not. So if you have a chrome P-trap, keep an eye on it. Years down the road, they're going to get brittle and start cracking, and then eventually they're going to get holes in them. Um, any questions about a bathroom faucet diagram? Um, I should show you a basin wrench. I got it over here. Okay, a basin wrench will help you. This will extend up when you're on your back in a kitchen. This will extend up into the space between the sink and the back wall. And you can actually get this will go on the nut of the lab and you are on the, on the sink and you can turn it backwards or forward just by flipping this over. So just grab the nut and turn it off, flip it over to turn it back on. And this is called a basin wrench. They sell those at Menards or probably a hardware store would have them. But you can push the button in and they go in and they'll fit right back in your toolbox. Kind of neat. All right. And again, you can use the right flexes to hook up the lines, right trap. Sometimes it could be a quarter, inch and a quarter on a lav, not a kitchen. This, this size will be one size smaller. It'd be an inch and a quarter. This is actually an inch and a half. So keep an eye out on that. You get the right trap sizes. All right. Um, here's your kitchen faucet diagram. I I brought us I brought a strainer with me tonight, and uh, I could actually show you how to put um, some putty on a strainer. Unscrew the strainer. This is this later. That's for hold the water. Jason's leaving me. All right. Grab some putty. Flatten her out. And then put your putty on the flange. 
and squish it out with your finger all the way around. Until you meet the other side where you started. Get her nice and flat. All right, then you flip it over and then this will go in the sink. So then down below, the black gasket goes first because that'll be up against the sink. And then there's this kind of a cardboard flange that goes underneath and then you actual the nut itself. So you bring that all up like so. And then the, the putty will ooze out and then you get her nice and tight. Put your finger in there and get all the putty off and then uh, use the channel lock. My channel locks are over there. Tighten that really nice and tight. And you got yourself uh, a, uh, a sink strainer all hooked up for you by using putty. All right. You got a quick question here, Rich. Okay. Wondering about how do you change the toilet seat in the RBA standard size? Depending if it's elongated or round, you have to get the right seat. And yes, you can just unscrew the bolts, pop them out, get the new one in. Same thing, put the bolts in, put screw up the nuts, and then use this nice screwdriver or Phillips, whatever it is, and then you can tighten them. They're really easy to change the toilet seats. There's Two sizes, two different sizes, elongated and round. That looks like a round. Elongated would, be, would come out another inch and a half to two inches further out. I don't know if you could find an elongated toilet or not. And those, those things are all like plastic now, right? Yeah, everything's plastic, plastic yes. Yeah. You can buy a more expensive seat with lights on it so you can see you in the night where you can tinkle and all that. <laughs> yeah, they got some pretty fancy seats out there with lights on them. All right, enough of that. Any questions on this kitchen faucet diagram? Um, I guess how much more difficult is it to change a kitchen faucet than a bathroom faucet? Well, it could be more difficult if you can't, if a kitchen faucet, you have a garbage disposal in your way. If you know, you might have to take the, the disposal out of the way to get to the kitchen faucet. You might have to take some of the plumbing out of the way to get to that kitchen faucet. Um, a lab faucet is more I, I would say it would be more easier than the kitchen faucet with less stuff in the way. Does that kind of answer the question? Um, another question? No? Oh, let's see. We got something. Uh, it cleaned under the toilet seat. And they now seem to pop out occasionally, or they screw too tight or something. So if, if the, the toilet uh, seat, the, yeah, probably the nuts or the bolts stripped. You or, could have stripped the bolts, yeah, or the nut. Um, it's not completely tight. You said the seat's loose, or it's not holding. It seems to pop out occasionally. Yeah, it's sometimes just like. They feel like they just like pop out if I like push the seat too far. Yeah, might be a, a, a bad seat. There, those are out there. You think you can't get the seat the the seal correct? I uh, yeah, it was it was totally fine before, and then I decided to clean it, and now I wonder if I did strip the. You screw. might have did some more damage to it. Can you just like buy replacement ones, I assume, without getting a yeah, whole new Yeah, you can get a new one. Just on, you know, there, it's, it's all it is is a bolt, a bolt through the hole with a nut on it. And you just, it's dependent on the seat, they all come with directions. And if the, the harder ones were, there is some snapping with the plastic to get it to work. 
when you shut it, when you shut, there's a lid on some of them. You, you just got to be really careful that you, you don't strip the nut when you put it on and kind of read what they tell you to do. Yeah, I think that's exactly what happened because Might they definitely have to get a new seat snapping mechanism and I, yeah. I must have just find screwed. the brand name. Um, it's it's a, 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 a chance you can take to find the brand name and call them and tell okay. them what the problem is and maybe you can get a new new seat or they'll send you new bolts. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That'll that teach you to clean your toilet, right? <laughs> yeah. Be careful. It was gross under there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Okay, holy cow, just flying. Faucet replacement checklist, uh, adjustable wrench, tape measure, channel locking pliers, basin wrench, that's that one right here. I got a putty knife here. I got all my, I got tools up to kazoo here. Plumber's putty here, rag or towel. I got small bucket work gloves. Um, your basic checklist. Um, what did I cover? I, I've got some stuff I didn't cover here. I, I, this is the stuff I have when I do the, some sweating on copper pipes. I got a map, map gas. Uh, nice. I suppose I better not light it, huh, Jason? No torches. Well, we'll get the we'll get the smoke alarm here in the fire department here. We don't want to do that. Um, so when you clean your copper. You want to paste it so that the solder will go in. So I get OD number five paste, and then I get lead-free solder, 100% lead-free solder, so they don't contaminate anything. Um, I got my brush, a half inch, stick that on there and go around and around and around. And pull it out and it's nice and clean. You want to go in at least an inch or until it comes out the other end here. There you go. And then you can grab a copper 90 or whatever. Paste her up, paste her 90, and then you can solder that 90 on there. Uh, use a piece of tin in case I'm close to wood so you don't burn your house down or anything plastic or wires you know, keep keep the heat away from anything that's going to burn um i have a brand new these come off one by one this is what clean also cleans it if you don't have a brush emery cloth see how it's cleaning that really nice and shiny and then you can put your paste on there and uh do some soldering. Um, I also brought tonight, if you can see this, there's a hole right here in this spigot. Spigot goes on the house. Well, this was in a brick house and it froze. This is what happens when it freezes. So when I turn this off, okay, it is off, it's all the way in. It shuts off right about here, okay? So what happened is the water wasn't completely out and they had it shut and it built up pressure from the cold air and it bursts. It's, and make sure when you come winter time, right before fall ends, open all this up and let the water drain out. Make sure, and when it's done dripping, then you can close it. But make sure the gap, the valve, that's what this is. There's a valve inside. Make sure this valve is off when you do that. Make, open this up, drain the water, and then make sure it's done dripping. And then you can shut it. Okay, and this prevents it from happening. So this heads up on your hydrants out there. Any questions? If you, no questions, no? okay. 
I know this ain't the right size, but this is a two inch no hub coupling. This is inch and a half pipe. So I would have definitely have a smaller one. But if you have to make a pipe fix, you can put a no hub coupling on here, tighten her down and then use your glue or primer, which I have here. One says glue, one says primer. Um, they, they make them smaller, so you don't have to buy the bigger ones, but recommend glue and primer to do any gluing with fittings. <clears throat> okay. I know no one wants to think about winter, but uh, it is an important thing that Rich has told you. So if you're not, if you're not draining those spigots properly after you turn off the inside shutoff in the basement, uh, that sort of stuff can happen. So it is just a really good thing to do each each fall, you know, when we're done using water outside. And then of course, when we get to the spring and it's warm enough, then you should be turning those shutoff valves back on inside. Can you go to the chin pasta diagram? Yes. <clears throat> okay, so the kitchen faucet diagram, I want to just touch on something. Um, you have a dishwasher. On the diagram, there is no uh, air gap. Over to the right, there is a spray hose, but you could put an air gap on the left side. And by doing that, if you're if you have a stainless steel sink, you can take a, a, a steel bit like this, and they call this a drill step set. So what this does, you get the hole started with the bit, you can use a smaller bit, and then you can take this. It's really sharp. And then put it in a cordless drill and drill this all the way in to the bolt here, this, this size, and you can add an air gap for your dishwasher in a stainless steel sink. If that makes sense. Why do you need that air? The air gap is per code for a dishwasher to have. I just wanted to make sure that this is available if you want to add a air gap to a, a stainless steel sink. Um, you can add also add it if if you have regular countertop that can just use a the right size bit, which would be Bobby an inch and an eighth. Okay. Is it easy to add a water line for a new fridge that has an ice maker? Yes, it's it's if it's accessible in the basement and you know where the refrigerator is, you can uh, sweat a, a line in a T and then a, a, a chrome valve. You can get a valve like this, but this has to be quarter inch, not three eighths. Okay. So you need a half by a quarter and then you can run copper, um, drill a hole on the wood floor or whatever behind the refrigerator. It's gonna be blocked by the refrigerator and you can hook it to the basement to that uh, copper line. It's really kind of easy to do, yeah. Isn't it easier to just run it from your kitchen sink or do you have to run it from the basement? It can be easier. It depends how much um, cup, cupboards or cabinets you got to go through. Okay. But it's, it's probably, the, I would check the first route, which goes straight down to the basement where the water is anyways. But if you're next to the kitchen sink and you could just run, run line right over it, drill it right through the cabinet pull the drawers out or open doors whatever you can you can get it that way too yes thank you mm -hmm. um i have a tool here i just want to show when i do water heaters i gotta make sure that there are no gas leaks and we just turn this on and let it warm up once it's warm it'll start beeping takes about 40 seconds to a minute. And right about, you hear that? So now this, it can sense a gas leak. You 
got a three quarter inch line going down to the water heater. Let's say this ain't tight. I put this sniffer right there and boom, it'll, it'll go off because it's not tight. It's letting gas out. Older, br older brass ones, these are the newer kind. These brass handles leak. You can put it right on the handle and it'll leak gas. And then I gotta go back and change them out anyway. So this is a nice tool. We're getting new ones now. And um, it actually can tell if there's a gas leak when you get through the front door, the, new, the newer ones. That's how efficient they are. I, have, I still got the old one, but I'm working my way up there. Jason, I think I pretty much got everything on the table here. I just want to put a reminder once again to email us on our website, how to find us, email us, contact us. You know, you can also um, find us almost on any social media platform by go, typing in Project Home WI. Uh, that's really what you want to put in, Project Home WI. Um, and you can find our page, or you can go right to our website, and our social links are up there, too, if you're interested in that stuff. Like I mentioned at the beginning, um, we do have five or six presentations of different home related home maintenance repairs things like that that are available to people on our youtube channel the full presentation and then of course if you have questions you can always reach out to us by email and we can respond to you so look at those too